Hello and welcome back to another KCC video. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today, we're jumping back into some pro revenge. Our first story today comes to us from Whip Solo. $50,000 collector cars are eyesores to the HOA. Let's jump right in. Okay, so I've been dealing with this for the last three months and it has finally reached its climax. For a little backstory, I own a towing company and am currently renting a home within an HOA I was not informed of when I signed the lease. My wife and I broke ground on our dream home days before lockdown went into effect last year. We signed a two-year lease as we were offered a $250 reduction in rent if we did. The house has a three-car garage attached to it, as well as parking for an additional two cars in the driveway. I keep my tow truck in the driveway or parked on the street in front of the house as it is classified as an emergency vehicle by the state and not merely a commercial vehicle. This means it is not against the HOA to have it in the neighborhood. We also own many cars as all three people living in the home are car nuts. Now, we do not keep that all at our home, but we do have a total of six cars at the home, plus the tow truck, which means two vehicles are always parked on the street. For reference, the cars we keep at home are one 1967 four-door Chevy Impala, two 1967 Ford Galaxy, three 1993 Mazda RX-7, four 1994 Nissan Silvia, five 2013 Subaru BRZ, six 2008 BMW M3. Of these cars, all of the imports have wide body kits that cost between four and 12 grand. This is important as to value of vehicles as well as looks. Look up Rocket Bunny and Liberty Walk to get an idea of what they look like. Okay, now for the story. After living here for just over nine months, and as the lockdowns were ending and the world opened its weary eyes, just to get punched in the face again, the HOA that we had absolutely no idea existed started by ticketing the tow truck, which is parked on the street, stating that it cannot be parked on the street. Okay, I'll put it in the driveway, no problem. Pay the $150 fine to the HOA. After getting the contract from the landlord and reading it, I figured it's best to just go along with it and not ruffle any feathers. By moving the tow truck into the driveway, I started parking the RX-7 on the streets. Here's a photo of what the car looks like from the company page. Now, the reason I listed the other cars, the two classic cars are kept in the garage, as well as the BRZ, as it is my project car, and I'm in the middle of building a very high-end drift car out of it. The other two people in my house drive the BMW and Nissan every day. The very next day, I return home, and there are tickets on both the RX-7 and the Silvia, which are parked on the street by our driveway. Numerous neighbors are also parked on the street, mind you, without tickets from the HOA. I immediately called the a-hole in charge of the HOA to ask what the hell is going on. A-hole tells me that our junk is devaluing the neighborhood and cannot be parked on the streets, and cites a rule in the HOA guidelines about vehicles being in disrepair or essentially a junk status needing to be put in a garage. I laughed, full on gut chuckle. The guy I'm talking to drives an early 2000s Cadillac that may be worth 10k. A-hole tells me that if the vehicles continue to be parked on the street, he will have them towed. Okay, let's play. I told A-hole that he needs to read his own manual and look at the vehicles he is talking about, which for reference here is an image of a matching Sylvia, which is also parked on the street. Clearly, both cars are not in disarray. A-hole 10 days after the initial ticketing calls for a tow truck, and this is where I should mention that the reason my tow truck is listed as an emergency vehicle is because my company has the county police contract for their towing, as well as the township. When small guy towing shows up to impound my vehicles, I am not home. I get a call from small guy that he has been sent to impound my cars. We know each other from the businesses we operate and I often kick him work when we are holding over a 90 minute ETA to not upset customers. Small guy tells me that he has to tow my cars due to his contract with the HOA, but he doesn't have a truck that can tow these lowered cars without damaging them. Small guy asks me to come home and remove the bumpers so they will go on his truck. 
I told Small Guy that it wasn't going to happen and I'd hate to look for other guy towing to send overflow work to while we see how the courts feel about the impounding and potential damages to the cars, Small Guy wisely decides not to tow the vehicles. Now, this was October of 2020. Since then, Small Guy has called me dozens of times about A-Hole, calling him repeatedly to tow the vehicles. Small Guy telling A-Hole that the only company in the area that can tow these vehicles is my company. Finally, on July 5th, A-Hole calls my company to impound my cars. Okay, no problem. I send three of my guys over in the shop pickup to drive my cars back to the shop where they were parked and kept for the last month. The wife started driving the Impala regularly as it is summer. Friday, we went to small claims court and I sued the HOA for towing costs $250 per vehicle, as well as storage on each vehicle $62 per day each and an additional $3,000 for inconveniences due to not having the cars for daily transportation. Add on an additional $1,500 for lawyer fees after roughly five minutes, the judge asks for photos from A-Hole of the cars. A-Hole gives the judge photos. The judge comments on how nice the cars are, and they're clearly not in disarray. I thank the judge and ask him if he can see the Cadillac parked on the street way in the background of the photo, as well as the other five or six cars in frame. The judge affirms this and asks A-Hole about these cars. A-Hole states that they are not in violation and even coughs up that the Cadillac is his car. The judge smiles a toothy grin and confesses to being a car guy and estimates that each of the two cars that have been impounded are worth 50k each and that A-Hole's Cadillac would clearly be the eyesore of the community. The judge then dismisses the HOA's claims and explicitly tells A-Hole that he is not to tow any vehicles out of the neighborhood without police confirmation of their disarray or abandonment. Judge goes further and states that the HOA is in violation of the township ordinance as the streets are not private streets but belong to the township. The judge then grabs what I assume is a calculator and starts punching away. After about a minute and a half of pure silence, the judge looks up and says, Okay, as stated before, A-Hole's claim for the HOA has been dismissed. As for OP's countersuit, I will rule in favor in the amount of $10,100 and $65.50 in court costs to A-Hole's HOA. A-Hole lost his freaking mind. A-Hole went on a rant about communism and how the judge was the problem with this country and into election conspiracies and every whack job theory you'd hear from people like Alex Jones. The judge warned A-Hole twice and finally ordered him in contempt and invited him to have a weekend stay on the county's dime at the local jail. A-Hole will be home tonight as the judge set to release him at 6 p.m. The cars are back in their original spots and I cannot wait for the hand wave and grin as A-Hole comes home this evening. It was mentioned down in the comments that OP should make sure they have a security camera on the front of their house, facing out to the street where the cars are, because A-Hole just had a major loss and spent a weekend in jail and he might try to get some retaliation. Now, OP mentioned after that though, that all of the cars have black view systems in them, 1080p with audio and motion activated, catching 290 degrees of the car's surroundings. So I think they'll be okay. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our second story today comes to us from Midnight Slayer 0372. My ex lied to me about being divorced, so I ruined his reputation, marriage, and job in one blow. Let's jump right in. Okay, this is gonna be a long story, so bear with me. When I was a naive 24-year-old, I met a charming and very smart and way older man. We'll call him Jake for the story. His sister is Dana and I'm Gina. Now on to the story. Jake was 42, recently divorced, or so he told me, and got a kid that he would see on the weekends. We meet online through a poetry website where both of us used to write. He was very aloof and stern on his comments and not very popular on the website, because he used to always come off like an arrogant prick. But I really liked his poems, regardless of his personality, and that's how it began. I commented on one, and he instantly PM'd me back, 
praising my writing and asking me if we could collaborate on a duet together. I've already done it a thousand times with a few friends and people on the site that I've respected, so I said sure. So long story short, we met on Hotmail Messenger. This was nearly 11 years ago, kids, so no WhatsApp. Although we did chat on FB too. This will come relevant later. Long story short, we instantly connected. He was funny, handsome, and really sweet underneath all his bravado. And his dark sense of humor was right up my alley. We spent months pulling all-nighters just talking and writing together. Not humble bragging, but I was pretty popular on the site because I won a few awards. So by association, he became popular too. People started reading Jake's poems and commented and obviously he got a huge head about it, but I digress. Our relationship became more serious after he confessed that he was falling for me and I was smitten. So I went along with it. We talked about my recent breakup and he assured me that he would never lie to me because the, of course he used that, which of his ex-wife cheated on him and he was devastated until he met me. I was shocked for how bad his ex was, but assured him that I was all in and I meant that. One important detail about our turbulent romance is that he was in Argentina, he's Argentinian, and I was still living in Italy in my hometown. So after almost two years of excuses for how tied up on work he was, I decided to surprise him with a visit. I bought my ticket and it literally was like a dream. He picked me up, we kissed, hugged, and he took me to his beach house, which would have been my first red flag, but I was dumb, young, and in love. Saying that it would be so much easier and fun for me doing touristy stuff on a beach port than staying in his suburbs house with no car. Because I told him in such a short notice that he didn't have the time nor the means to take time off. Which again, blatant lie, because he was one of the partners of the company. But again, I bought it and off I went on my own almost for the entire week that I was there. He only spent one night with me and the rest of the week just picked me up from whatever it was that I ended up wandering and we hang out for a few hours, have relations, and then he just dropped me off at the house. I know that most of you are thinking, come on OP, just get your head out of your butt and realize what a bunch of BS that is. And believe me, now writing this, I realized how much of an idiot I was. But it gets better. The day before I had to get back to Italy, he took me to dinner with his six-year-old son and his sister. I was super happy to meet his family and son, but got caught off guard when he just introduced me as his friend from Italy dropping in town for tourism. His sister was super sweet, albeit a bit awkward, and his son was adorable. We ate, talked, and off we went. He picked me up first thing in the morning and dropped me off at the airport. Now that you got the full story, I'll get to the good part. Two days later and still a bit jet lagged, I got a very interesting email from his sister Dana. Her email was short and very simple. Dear Gina, I know that you might think that I was weird and maybe a bit rude when we met, but it was only because I was tricked by Jay to join the dinner with his kid. He never mentioned that you guys were dating, but after confronting Jake, he confessed and begged not to tell anyone or his marriage will be ruined. But you're such a sweet and young girl that doesn't deserve his deceit. Jake is still married and never left their home. Don't just take my word for it. And Dana sent me pictures of his real Facebook profile and surprise, the perfect little family. I thanked her and shut down my computer. I was devastated. I really thought Jake was the love of my life and was seriously considering moving there. I spent all night crying and drinking wine until I get myself the worst migraine. But the heartbreak lasted about 12 hours. At 4am I got up, shower, make a pot of fresh coffee and started planning my revenge. I was hurt, yes, but also so angry that he not only deceived me but dragged his sister and his innocent child in his lie. I was at the other side of the world and I didn't have the money to pay someone to kick his butt or egg his car, but as my Sicilian father would say to me, if someone slaps you, don't turn the other cheek, cut off their effing hand. And so I did. Cue my sweet revenge. I sat down at my desk and turned on the computer and logged into his hotmail. 
I didn't have the password, but I knew him well enough to answer his three security questions on the section forgot password. One, two, three, bum baby, I'm in. And holy crap, this arrogant piece of human crap was not only dating me, but two other girls. I quickly logged into his Facebook too, because he had everything linked, the naivety. So I quickly changed all his passwords to I'm a prick and discovered that his personal email was also connected to his work account. I dug through his emails for two hours. This idiot never erased anything, so he had more than 5,000 emails, until I found something very interesting. The girls he was also seeing, and their very hot email exchanges, pecker pics included. So what did I do? You guessed it. I crafted a very lengthy and explicit email with pics and chat logs attached confessing to Jake's wife, posting as him obviously, begging for forgiveness and declaring how much of a crap person I was and as proof of my willingness to change and transparency was sending this email to the girls too. But that I did it only because I was a closeted gay and thought that being a player would help me forget how much I really loved guys, that I was sick of pretending and hope she could move on and maybe be friends. But not only to them, I effing copied his entire list of contacts, including the CEO and partners of the company he worked at, his parents, and D of course. This email was perfection. All the pictures and chats, myself included, he ever exchanged with any other woman. I copied myself on the list obviously as a countermeasure and move on to part two of my plan. I changed all his Facebook and declaring that I was so relieved that people finally knew who I was. The pride flag was his new wall picture and his profile picture was a Photoshop picture of two guys kissing. I created five different accounts on gay websites with all his info, included his phone number and started to chat with a bunch of guys until out of nowhere, this guy sent me, oh better yet, he sent Jake a message. Tony was his old university friend that had always been secretly lusting for him for years, and although I felt bad for this later, I set up a date. Part 3 of my plan. One week after this massive internet blowout and his family and friends angrily calling him all sorts of names and getting fired because his bosses didn't want the bad press, so Jake, trying to make amends with his family and friends, makes a barbecue for his birthday but I would have paid one year worth of salary just to see his face and his guests when in the middle of their celebration, Tony appeared with a bottle of champagne, a bag full of lube, and adult toys to celebrate privately as I asked. Apparently, there was a huge fight and everyone left Jake flustered and angry, crying because some psycho wanted to ruin his life. I blocked him and forgot about everything until six months ago when he out of the blue sent me a message on Instagram asking me why I disappeared and didn't support him when he was on his lowest. And oh boy, the satisfaction I felt when I only replied back, sorry Jake, but I think everything you got was karma for all the lies and time wasted you fed me. Good luck. Oh, and by the way, it was always me. I then blocked him and made my account private. Jake did try to call a few mutual friends to try to get them to give him my number, but they ignored him. They also got the infamous email. So yeah, I got my revenge and it was worth every single hour. I know, I'm effing petty. I'm struggling with something with this story and I don't know if you guys will feel the same way, but I can't figure out why Jake would bring his sister and his son to meet his side piece. Can anybody figure that out? I'd love to see your comments down below. Check out both OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.